This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm gonna show you how I take my photographs in my garage. This is a technique I've touched on in some of my other videos, but I got a lot of questions about the specifics on how I do it, so here's a full tutorial on how I take my photos in my garage. The technique I'm going to be showing you is not a method that I invented by any means. It's called light painting, and there are a few things you're going to need to get started. Uh, first is a digital camera with manual mode. Second is just a regular old tripod. Third is a flashlight. Yeah, just a flashlight. Some basic editing software. I'm going to use Lightroom. And then optional would be a gray card, and I'm going to show you how we can use that a little bit later on. If you don't have a digital camera, you think that it's too expensive, I did a quick uh, Craigslist search here, and this was in real time, just my first search I did. Here's a camera that's a little bit nicer than the one I was using at the start of this video. It's, I think, 300 bucks with lenses, all that. Uh, there's another one down here that I think is 150 bucks. So it's really not a huge investment if you want to get a used one. It doesn't have to be super fancy, just a regular old digital camera. And some of you may be wondering, why do I need some special technique? Why can't I just take these photos with my iPhone? Or why do I need this fancy flashlight method you're gonna show me? And the reason is lighting. You need to get a lot of light. Here's a quick photo I took of a table I built and it was kind of out in the overcast sun and it looked amazing. I was so happy with how this looked. So I brought it into my studio, got all my expensive studio lights and it just looked horrible. It looked so dark and I couldn't figure out why. And the reason is I didn't have enough light. I went to the uh, photography store and they're like, oh yeah, you just need more light. So I bought a $600 light, did that, still wasn't enough. So this is gonna be a really cheap way that you can get enough light instead of having to spend two or $3,000 on studio lights. We can use it, do it all with a $10 flashlight. The first couple photos you see me take are gonna be with this gray card, just this little plastic thing here. I don't, I'm going to show you what that is uh, more in the editing process, but I didn't want you to be confused and think that I forgot a credit card there. And the camera I'm going to be using is my nine-year-old Canon T3i and a Canon 50mm 1.8, which is about a $110 lens. The settings I'm going to be doing is manual mode, and I'm going to have kind of a cheat sheet to all this here in a second. And I'm going to start off at one-tenth of a second. Let's see me scroll all the way to that. Excuse me, to a 10-second shutter, not one-tenth. 10-second shutter and F16 ISO 100. Then I'm gonna focus it using the autofocus. Make sure it's perfectly in focus. Then I'm gonna come around, turn it to manual focus so it doesn't change when I try to take it in the dark and confuse it. And there's the settings right there. 10 second F16 ISO 100 autofocus off. I'm gonna give some demonstrations of this process here in a little bit, but the first thing is lights out. I wanna pitch black in there, everything lights out. Engage your shutter, just like it sounds, just click your shutter. And then you're gonna paint your item with a flashlight, which is why it's called light painting. And that is it. Okay. All right, so we dry run, but we can yeah. Yeah. just in case I accidentally yep. do it. Whatever you're ready. Yep, ready. It's going? We've been gone for 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, hit the shutter, slippers off. Light on. Really try to move the wrist fast. If you go slow, it really catches those streaks and you'll see it in there. Also, try not to get the backdrop. Then it highlights the backdrop. So I get in here super fast. You're almost getting kind of tired. Get the far corners. I always forget the far corners. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. This is why I do a voiceover on everything. But the gist of it is keep the flashlight moving as fast as you can. Try to get the entire piece covered, get the legs, don't forget the legs, don't forget the corners of the thing, and try to keep the flashlight off of the background. And that's gonna help you get the most even best photo of just your table, not the backdrop. Okay, let's try this for real here. Lights out, flashlight on, and you see I turn the overhead lights off and then I keep another smaller light right next to my photography equipment so I can turn that off just before I engage the shutter. Try to keep the light moving. And as I come over here, it's a little bit dark. It's kind of hard to see with the iPhone on that screen, but it was a little bit light up top, a little bit dark down below. So I'm gonna adjust it just a little bit and I'm gonna go to an F14, which is gonna make it a little bit lighter. Keep the shutter the same. And I sped up the uh, video here just so you don't have to sit through the entire 10 second shutter again. And we're gonna see how this one turned out. And this one actually turned out really nice. It looks a little overexposed on the iPhone, but uh, there, I think I got it a little more accurate there with the phone. 
but yeah, kind of a, a nice 10 second F14 looked pretty good. I don't want you to take these settings that I'm giving you too literally, if that's the right word, because I use anywhere from a 10 second to a 30 second shutter. Uh, sometimes when I'm doing a larger table, I'll need every bit of that 30 seconds. And even then it's kind of hard to get the whole thing in there. I believe this one, I was doing a 25 second shutter. Yeah, 25 F13. So play around with it. If it looks overexposed, uh, adjust it down. If it looks underexposed, adjust it up. And then just keep playing around with it. You know, anywhere from that 10 to 20 seconds is usually enough for an average size table. But uh, yeah, try to keep it around F10 to F15, I'd say, is a, is a good range to be. But don't get too set in these specific numbers. And once you get the hang of this, it's really not too difficult to adjust this. If it's too dark or underexposed, try a longer shutter, just more time with the flashlight. Or you can do a lower f-stop. If you're at an f-15, you can go to an f-12. Or what I'll do a lot of times is do a combination of the two. Uh, adjust both of those in the way to make it fit your photo best. If it's too light, if it's overexposed, bring the f-stop f -stop up, f-15 to 18, for example. Or do a shorter shutter time, just less time with the flashlight. It really just play around with it, do combinations of the both, and you'll figure it out pretty quick. The one downside of this technique is that it takes such good photos they will capture absolutely everything in the photo. So I've done it before where I've had greasy fingerprints on my st table legs that I didn't realize were there until I got into the editing room because the little viewfinder wasn't a big enough screen to see them on when I was taking them. So make sure everything's super, super clean. In the middle of making this video, I actually got a brand new camera and it's a much fancier, much more expensive version of my old one. Still has all the same settings, so nothing really changed with that. This larger table I'm going to be demonstrating on is a 30 second shutter F10 ISO 100. And we're just going to see how this ends up and uh, adjust it from there. <laughs> that, one, that one I can't cut out. Anyway. You can see there that the 30 second shutter in F10 was way too overexposed. You see how bright the backdrop is there. You see how bright the table is. You see how bright the cat is. So we're going to try to bring all that down and maybe even keep the cat out of the next photo. So I'm going to bring that down to a 25 second shutter. And I'm going to bring that up to an F16 and see where that brings us. And you can see I'm really trying to focus on those back corners. It's so easy to forget those when you're painting a large table like this. And that is right about exactly where we want it. That looks really nice. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a handful of other photos just from different angles. I'll spare you having to watch me take every one of those photos. And then we're just going to go on to editing in Lightroom. So stay tuned for that. I'll be right back with how we edit these photos. But before that, I want to share what I do with them when they're finally finished. The first place I go is to my website, so I can hopefully get them sold sooner than later. And with Squarespace, there's no limit to the number of items you can list, which is awesome for me because I make a lot of tables and no two are the same. So there's literally no limit to how many options I can give my clients. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to DIY your own website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Blacktail Studio to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Welcome to the editing portion here. What we're going to do first is we're going to try to get the color right. You can see this isn't a great photo. It's way overexposed. The color isn't great. But we're only going to use this for the color. Try to get the wood, kind of a true brown, English walnut, graft color. So, we go over here to this little white balance selector. I click that. We're going to go over to our gray card. And we're going to set that as our target neutral. And you can see it's not great, but this is going to be our jumping off point. So, first thing I'm going to do just to make it easier on us is I'm going to bring this exposure down so it's a little truer. But you can still see how orange and yellowish this is. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to bring all of these down. So I'm in the hue first. I'm going to go to about negative 25 on all of them. This is just something I've learned from experience. It's kind of a good starting point. So feel free to do the same, but your flashlight will probably not be the same temperature as mine. So you'll need to adjust your own a little bit as needed. Over the saturation. You don't want to go too far, otherwise we're going to make this a black and white photo. But you can see we're getting, getting a lot closer there. 
somehow looks a little green to me too. Okay. I don't hate that. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy, and I apologize in advance, is my screen recorder doesn't capture this copy feature, so I'll try to throw a screenshot in there for you uh, so you can see all the little boxes I'm clicking on. I'm going to copy that. Now we're going to try to find a photo we actually want to use. So this one didn't have the card on it. I kind of like this one. It's got less light on the backdrop. This one was I missed the back part here with the flashlight. And this one isn't bad. It's a little much on the backdrop. So let's see if we can use this one. It's a little underexposed. So we're going to go over here to paste and that's going to paste that color in there. It's going to make it the same as the one we just tweaked. You can see it's so dark that it's hard to tell how well it works. So let's bring that exposure up. You can see it's such a darker photo that we really had to bring that exposure up. The color looks pretty good. Kind of looks a little pink to me. So I'm going to go to the tint there. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little, little yellowish still. Bring those down. Okay, let's play with the rest of the settings and see if we need to adjust the color anymore. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna contrast up. If you are new to Lightroom and it seems super intimidating, don't be too intimidated by it. When I first started, I went and visited with a photographer friend of mine, and I was like, oh man, what are the magic settings? How do I do this? And teach me teach me the ways. And he just said, move the dial one way. If it looks better, keep it. If it looks worse, move it the other way. So when you're getting started in this, just start spinning the dials. See what you like. If it looks worse, go back the other way. If it looks better, keep it. So on that note, let's just go down with the contrast. Kind of looks a little washed out. So let's go up a little bit. Don't go too far with any of them though. It's tempting to really spin these all the way left or right. Try to show some restraint with that. Shadows, one of those. Yeah, kind of like the way that looks just a little bit more shadows. You want a brighter white or not. Don't try to alter your photo. You want to keep it true to how the table actually looks. You don't want to mislead people, um, but you want to just give it a real true to life daylight look. Blacks. I usually like to bring those down on these photos. Clarity. Don't go crazy with this one. It can look really ridiculous if you go too far. See, that's way, way too far. Just a little bit. Overall, I'm kind of liking the way this is this is shaping up. What I don't like is this ugly wrinkle on my backdrop. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my spot removal tool. See if we can clean that up a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. I also have some fingerprints here that I don't really like. So we're gonna clean those up. And if you have a nice daylight photo, of your item, 
it's kind of nice to bounce it off of that and see how close the color is looking. Tell it's definitely a different style of photo, but the color is looking pretty close there. So once you have everything where you like it, you want these photos to be consistent. So there's one doesn't look more blue than the other. They're all fairly consistent. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy all the settings. And again, I'm going to show you a screenshot of this since my screen recorder does not record this. Now we're going to go find another photo we like. I was editing on some of these, but what I'll do is I'll re revert them so we can show you how that paste works. So that's a pretty nice photo. Reset the settings. You can see here all the colors are zeroed out, white balance is as shot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste all the color, all the exposure. Since that was a really dark photo, it's probably going to get really bright, but we can adjust that. Yeah, so you see it gets really bright, but let's bring that exposure down. Still just looks a little pink to me. Might be crazy. I'm also a little colorblind. But this one is a pretty nice photo. Didn't really need much in the way of spot removal for wrinkles or dirt, fingerprints. Overall, it's a pretty good photo, so that would be a keeper. Let's keep going. You can see how fast it goes once you have the settings on the first photo down. So this one looks like it is unedited. So let's try that again. Paste. It's going to get really bright. It does. Bring that down. Again, that's just kind of a nice neutral, natural brown. This is an English walnut graph table. If uh, I do have another YouTube video on making this table, if you're curious about that. Again, this is a little pink. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Let's keep this going. Another photo that hasn't been edited. I'm just going to paste. Super bright. But we knew that was going to happen. Back to our exposure. Bring it way down. And these whites for some reason seem really bright. So we're going to bring that down a little bit. Go all the way down, see how far we can go. Can you did or you should notice that I missed this whole corner here with the flashlight. If I was doing that again, I would try to hit that. Got this whole lip very consistently. I like how I got the legs a little bit in the back, but not too lit up. There you go. Now we're just going to export these to our folder, and I'm going to show you. One more table without doing the gray card technique, just uh, trying to get that color from scratch. Okay, now let's try to get this color right without using the gray card. Uh, the gray card card, as you saw, doesn't work perfectly, so this isn't a bad way to go. So the first thing I do, just to see if I can get lucky, is I'll take this white balance neutral, and I'll just click a couple spots and see if uh, I like anywhere. Don't really like that. Try right on that black. Don't really like that either. Let's try on these legs. Not much better. I think we're getting further away. 
It's a little better. Let's reset it and just see if we can uh, tweak it naturally. So you see here, it's really blue. And so we're gonna bring that temp up. And I like the look of the blue photos sometimes, but they just don't look natural. So like I said, you really wanna get these as natural as you can. That's kind of coming in nice, Maybe a little too far. Let's try that. You can see our exposure is pretty good. This was a pretty good job with the flashlight. We looked a little dark in the back, but overall, we got the front, we got the legs. Not too bad. So let's see if we can bring that yellow and orange down. Get a little closer. There we go. Now let's just play around with the exposures, contrast, black point, all that. Oh, it shot pretty well. I'm going to go up just a little bit. A little bit of contrast. Highlights look pretty good, but let's see. Sure, a little bit of those. Shadows. Look good. Whites, just a little bit up, blacks, yeah, I like it there, clarity, just a little bit of clarity, I'll save all the cropping work and cleaning this up. It's not really a Photoshop tutorial. I'm going to try to keep it just to this light painting technique. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So let's see how it looks on our other photos. I'm copying all the colors and tones and exposure. Here's one of our cat walked into the shot. A little overexposed in that one though. A bad photo, but not a great one. A nice photo. Make sure that I haven't messed with this one. Yeah, it has shot paste. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Doesn't need much in the way of adjustments. Here's another one. It's as shot, hasn't been adjusted yet. It's a little extreme. Bring the exposure down some. This one I might play around a little bit with the yellows and oranges. Pretty good. I liked this overhead shot. Pretty even lighting, a little bit dark in a couple spots, but let's see how our pace settings work. Pretty good. I don't know that I want to adjust anything with that. So yeah, we're just going to export these and um, well, I guess before we'd export them, we'd crop out the cats and the, the ladders. But again, I'll spare you that work. Uh, but I hope this helped. 
Okay, we've got all the cats out of there, and here's the finished photos. Uh, I was pretty happy with most of these. It was kind of tough getting that color at first, but overall, I'm pretty happy. The white one I thought was pretty neat. It was an unusual table. The white epoxy isn't for everybody, but it does make kind of a cool photo, and it doesn't have to be just tables. You can do something like these skateboards I built for my nephews. So if you have smaller products, it can be really handy for that type of photography, not just big tables, which happens to be mostly what I make. Uh, this is a table I did a full YouTube build on. If you do want to click the link to that, you can check that out. Okay, thanks so much for watching. If I didn't mention before, I am definitely not a professional photographer. So if you are a professional photographer and you think I made any glaring mistakes or you have any suggestions for me, please leave them in the comments. If you do have any questions for the amateur that did this video, leave those in the comments too and I'll make sure to get to every single one of those. Thanks so much for watching and uh, as always, please subscribe. Thanks again.